How many of you all know that God is worthy to be praised? The psalmist said, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, his name is worthy to be praised. I thank God today for being here. Deborah and I drove from Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, to be back with, here with you for uh, the women's retreat, which was magnificent, and to be here this morning and this afternoon with you. I left Pastor. I'm coming back, Pastor Emeritus. And I just want to commend Pastor Tomir Davenport for the work that he continues to do. Amen. And, uh, and for the opportunity to come back and to be with you on this morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation. We thank God for uh, Sister Davenport who uh, spearheaded the uh, retreat. It was wonderful. And even though we were in another meeting, uh, the overflow. Sometimes if you can't be in uh, the coffee cup, if you just be in the saucer, you can catch the overflow. And that's what we were getting on, on this afternoon, on yesterday. And so it was wonderful. And so True Light is good to see you. It's a blessing to be back. Um, and I just, uh, if I could hug all of you all at once, I would, uh, because you know without a shadow of a doubt that, that I love you. So it's good to be back, but this morning is all about Jesus. Uh, this is, uh, we can celebrate relationships and we can talk about whatever, but at the end of the day, Sunday, is all about Jesus. And so with that, praise God, I'm going to go right into uh, the scripture text that I have for this morning. Amen. And actually, even as I was coming up, the Lord even changed uh, the trajectory of what I needed to do. Um. Praise God. And so if you have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to Isaiah chapter 6. Starting at verse 1, and I'm just going to read um, this very familiar passage of scripture to you. And don't think that you know where I'm going because you don't. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 6, starting at verse 1, says, In the year that King Uzziah died, or Uzziah died, or Uncle Uz, however you want to say it, I saw in a vision the Lord sitting on a throne, high and exalted, with the train of his royal robe filling the most holy part of the temple. Above him seraphim, heavenly beings, stood each one, had six wings, with two wings he covered his face. With two wings he covered his feet, and with two wings he flew. And one called out to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out, and the temple was filling with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of ceremonially unclean lips. And I live amongst a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. 
Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongues. He touched my mouth with it and said, listen carefully. This has touched your lips, your wickedness, your sin, your injustice, your wrongdoing is taken away and your sin atoned for and forgiven. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. That's the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to our God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, Authentic Praise and Worship. Authentic Praise and Worship. Lord, thank you for the privilege of preaching. Speak to us, speak through us, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, redeem those who need redeeming, recover those who need recovering, and God, elevate those, exalt those who need exalting, and abase those who are exalted, but feed all of us, because we need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Where is the importance of these verses that I read in your hearing? What do you put the most emphasis on? We're told in verse 1 that there is this king whose name is Uzziah. And if you do the background study of Uzziah, you understand that he was a great king. As a matter of fact, Uzziah was probably second to David as it related to kings of, of Jerusalem and Israel. He brought Israel back to its former prominence. He made their army one of the strongest armies in the world at that particular time. And so he was a magnificent king, even though he had flaws in his character. We read in verse 2 of seraphim. In verse 3, we hear, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. In verse 4, the doorposts move. The house is filled with smoke. Verse 5, woe is me, says the prophet, for I am undone. Verse 6, one of the seraphim come with a live coal to place on the mouth of this prophet priest. His sins are purged in verse 7, and he hears the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah now cleaned up, now purged, says, here am I, send me. The question is, where is the emphasis, really, of this text? Deborah and I got up this morning and we uh, got dressed and went down to have uh, breakfast at, at the hotel. And as we were looking around, we noticed that there was a, a young lady who had a wedding dress on her arm. And she had a bouquet in her hand, and the, she was standing by a young man, and we were wondering if this was the bride and groom who had gotten married Saturday. Well, we overheard that 
that indeed was the bride and groom. Praise God. I can only imagine, having been pastor for so many years, how much preparation went into just getting to the marriage moment. You all remember, those of you who were married and had a ceremony that you wanted to be meticulous in everything that happened leading up to the wedding. You wanted the gown to be just so. Your flowers, floral arrangements had to be in place. Everything was planned out. Know how many thousands of dollars were spent leading up to that moment. But this morning, all she had, she had the gown on her arm and the bouquet in her hand, and she had her husband standing next to her. And I wonder where is the emphasis of that relationship? Was the emphasis leading up to the marriage? Or is the emphasis on what's going to happen now that they are married? You know, young people, when prom night comes, it's a big time. It's like a transition in the life of a young person. And there's a lot of preparation that goes into getting ready for the prom. Right? And much money is spent on just the preparation even before the prom takes place. As I was reading Isaiah 6, I asked you a question. What is the emphasis of this text? Is the emphasis on Isaiah? Is the emphasis on Uzziah? Is the emphasis on him receiving a charge? Is the emphasis on him and his response to that charge? But I want to suggest that the real emphasis of this text is right in verses 2 and 3. And it's there that I want to spend the rest of our time together. For in verse 2, it says, seraphim with six wings were flying around the throne. Verse 3 lets us know that they were crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Now, why is this the emphasis of the whole text? It is because if you and I are really seeking to make heaven our home, we really want to be around the throne of God. We want to be in the presence of the one who created heaven and earth. That's where these seraphim are. They are around the throne and they are giving authentic praise to God. Praise God. And so I had to zero in on this word authentic because authentic means genuine, bona fide being actually and exactly what is claimed. It's not false. It's not an imitation. But it's real. And it's actual. It's sincere. It's authentic. There is no pretentiousness in the authenticity of praise. Then I had to look up the word praise. Praise means to express warm approval or admiration for God. Worship, the 
Greek word for worship is Christianuio, which means to encounter God and praise him. That means that if authentic praise is going to take place, you've got to encounter God. And when you encounter God, then you're going to praise. And so I wonder how many of you came with the intent of encountering God this morning. Because if you didn't come to really encounter God, I'm not sure you can give authentic praise. So the emphasis of this text to me is in verses 2 and 3. Each seraphim has six wings in pairs to serve different purposes. Now, I'm, you know, I'm not the sharpest pencil in the box, but I do believe that it don't take six wings to fly. And certainly, God could have them expended without wings at all because he is God all by himself. But the text says that they had six wings and each one of those wings, pairs, serves a purpose. They use two wings to cover their faces. Why? Because they are shielding themselves from becoming overwhelmed by the looking directly at God's glory. All right. Come on, Pastor. You know, I, I, I do remember, I recall where when Moses went on top of Mount Sinai, and God just passed by him. The Bible said that when Moses came down off the mountain, that his face shone so brightly until they had to veil his face in order to speak to him. I'm trying to tell you that if you really want to be, have authentic praise, you've got to be in the presence and you've got to encounter God. But when you encounter God, know this, that you're not just encountering just anybody. Because God outshined the sun. Oh, my goodness. You know, when I was driving up here, I had to put some shades on because the sunlight was so bright. But can you encounter? Imagine how much more brilliant God is. I mean, God is the one who put the sun in its place. And so with two wings, they covered their faces, shielding them from becoming overwhelmed by looking directly at God's glory. With two wings, they covered their feet symbolizing their humble respect for and submission to God. Did you all get that? Humble respect and submission to God. In other words, they understood that they were not God, and so they came with a certain level of humility. I wonder how we encounter God. You know, some people seem to, by their expressions and by their uh, demeanor, think that they're doing God a favor <laughs> by showing up. And God's been waiting on you, wondering how long would it take for you to come. We need to have a sense of humility Amen. for God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know about you, but sometimes I find myself not just on my knees, but I find myself prostrate yes, before God. Yes. Yes. Because I understand that I'm not just talking to the man upstairs. Yes. Yes. He's not a bellhop. Yes. He, he's not like the people at the airport that take your your, your, your luggage. 
you know, no, G, God is creator. He's provider. He's sustainer. And so I come to him with a humility and a reverence. They are flying with two wings to cover their face, two wings to cover their feet. And two wings to fly around God's throne in heaven representing the freedom and joy that come from worshiping God. Amen. Did you all hear that? Yes. I'm free. Right. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is rested. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Well, you say, well, preacher, how did you get free? He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And so when you talk about praise, authentic praise, there is a freedom that you have in God that only God can give you. But not only does he give you a freedom, he gives you joy. And this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. You see, some folk are happy, and it's all right to be happy, but happy come and go. But joy lasts forever. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. It doesn't matter what people are doing. I've got joy unspeakable joy and the Lord gives that joy to me because he knows I need it to run this race hallelujah and so with two wings they cover their face with two wings they cover their feet and with two wings they do fly but the Bible says that the seraphim are the closest angels to God. They focus on praising and worshiping God for he is who he is. I was listening to somebody, I believe it was, was, was a Sunday school teacher, Minister Derek, uh, was talking about, uh, you know, worshiping God not because of what he does, but worshiping God because of who he is. You see, there are a lot of people who come to church trying to get something out of God. Right? Listen, God has already done enough. If he don't do nothing else, he's already done what he said he would do. And so we don't praise God looking for a hand out. We praise God because of who he is. Hallelujah. Because you, you need to get to know him. <laughs> because he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We need to praise God for who he is. That's what the angels do. We need to praise God, yes, for what he does. And we need to spend most of our time wanting to be in the presence of God. Praise God. And so what do they say as they praise God? Holy, holy, holy. Because God is holy. And we are commanded to be holy. Amen. You know, so many people go around talking about, I ain't holy. We know you ain't. <laughs> you, know, man, listen, you, you ain't got to convince us that you ain't holy. And outside of God, ain't none of us holy. But God is the one who has to make us Holy. But when we praise God with authentic praise, we cry holy because God is holy. 
But not only is this proclamation made in Isaiah 6, 3, but when you go to Revelation, the last book of the Bible, chapter 4, verse 8, the seraphim are flying around saying, holy, holy, holy. Angels attend the throne of God. Their task is to continually praise God. The threefold repetition of the word holy is forceful in its declaration, and it may be attributable to the fact that there is a triune Godhead. And so they cry, holy, 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 because there is a father in the Godhead. There is a son in the Godhead, and there is a Holy Spirit in the Godhead, and all of them demand our, our saying holy. Hallelujah. Revelation 4, 8 says, day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Oh my goodness. In John 4, 23, 24, Jesus told the, the folk, he said, you all worshiping in temples and in mountains, he said, but the day is coming. Yes. In fact, now he is that true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. Yes. Can I tell you something? I don't need true light Christian to cry holy. I don't have to be here to tell, for somebody to tell me to lift my hands, to praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, I don't even need Sunday to praise the Lord. Because when I wake up on Monday, I'm going to praise the Lord. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm going to praise him. Friday and Saturday, I'm going to praise him. And because I'm in the practice of praising, Monday through Saturday, by the time I get to Sunday, you're going to get the overflow of my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual service of worship. True worship takes place on the inside, within our hearts and our spirits, which is the dwelling place of God. The body of Christ, which is the church, has been chosen by God to be his permanent dwelling place throughout time and into eternal ages to come. For our bodies, of the temple of the living God and the spirit of God dwells within each of us who are believers in Jesus Christ. If we really catch a glimpse of the awesome nature of this reality, we would be forever stripped of our own vain glories, self-importance, pride, presumption, and arrogance. But too often, those that have been saved by grace through faith in Christ are glaringly ignorant of the incalculable privileged position that we hold. Hallelujah. But when you come into the presence of God, you need to know, and I'm hurrying on to a close because I got to do something later on. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you talk about God, you're talking about Elohim. Elohim is the creator name of God. It is the power name of God. It is that part of God that in chapter one of Genesis, he just spoke and worlds came into existence. When you talk about God, you're talking about Jehovah. He is the Lord God Almighty. He is mighty in battle. When you talk about God, you're talking about Adonai. He is our master and our king. When you talk about God, 
you're talking about Jehovah Elohim. He is the Lord God. He is Jehovah Roy. The Lord is my shepherd. He is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the Lord that healeth. He's Jehovah Nisi. The Lord my banner. Jehovah Shalom. He's the Lord my peace. Jehovah Sabaoth. He's the Lord of hosts. He's Jehovah Sitkanu. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah everything. Because he's all I need. I don't know about you. But I've come to praise his name. Because his name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I will. I will. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why don't you turn to somebody, give them a high five, and tell them praise is what I do. Praise is what the Lord needs. Praise, I'm going to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him according to the trumpet sound. Praise him with the sultry and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments. Praise him with the loud sounding cymbal. Praise him, praise the Lord. Let everything, let everybody praise, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, he said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So if you can, get on your feet and praise him. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Martin, I'm going to quote Deacon Donovan for a second. Used to be a deacon here, Deacon Donovan. Many times Deacon Donovan would say, Pastor would preach a certain way when he was here. But then when we would go out, let me tell y'all what we got today. We got prime rib today. Thank you, Pastor. But true life, before we open the doors, did y'all notice what, we, what got put up on Friday? Did y'all, do y'all notice what got put up on Friday? And pastor, I don't know, Sister Martin, I don't know, but the focus, the mantra for True Light Christian this year is authentic praise and worship, True Light. You said the Holy Spirit, the Lord is the great event planner. I like to call him the, the greatest orchestrator. He orchestrates. He conducts like none other. So we've been preaching, Pastor Martin, and, and Mother, Mother Fleming, we talked about confirmation last week. True light. The Holy Spirit has confirmed authentic praise and worship. That's what we've been doing. Can you see God working? and putting this thing together, because he's getting ready to take us to a different level. But we got to praise and worship to get to that level. He's setting this thing up. Thank you, Pastor. You didn't have to leave, Pastor. You could have just went ahead and opened the doors of the church. 
Pastor Fleming, can you give us a song? Everybody on your seat, on your feet, I'm sorry. The doors of the church are open. You can come on your Christian experience. You can come as a candidate for baptism. If need be, we'll email another church. I know I'm old school. We, we can even write a letter, Sister Lever. We can do that too. But the point is, in order to have the authentic praise and worship, you have to be connected to the one. Did y'all hear what Pastor said? He's the sustainer of life. Jehovah Rapha. Did y'all hear how he called that role? And the one that I really like is Jehovah Everything. When you just can't think about it, as the old saints used, if I couldn't say one word, Big John, I would just wave my hand. Because he's been good to us. Much better than we could ever be for ourselves or to ourselves. And how can we not come and give him honor? Sister Jerry, give him praise. Or here, brother teacher, Dave, I, I believe you kind of said it this way. Or, or Sister Blunt said it. Being here the last couple of days was kind of like a glimpse into heaven. And then brother Derek said that this was good this weekend. But one, uh -uh, once we get to glory... If you don't like praise and worship down here, if you don't like authentic praise and worship here down here, Sister Stewart, we don't want to go to glory. Because when we get to glory, what a time. What a time we going to have. And then here, I know what some of your names are down here. But he's going to change some names, Sister Henderson. Are you looking forward to seeing what the Lord calls you? How many of y'all looking forward to getting a crown? But hold on. You're not going to have that crown long because you're going to toss it at his feet. And then here, what's so great about heaven is what's not there. No more hate. No more sickness. No more disease. No more all these things that keep folks separated. But what is there? Praise and worship through ceaseless ages. Old saints used to say, come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Don't you want to go? Don't you want to be there where Jesus is? Is there one? Is there one? You may be seated. We have done as the Lord has required us. So true light, before we bring Sister Davenport up for the announcements, I just have one question for y'all. Are you all glad that we asked Pastor Martin to come back? So here. Let me get y'all ready. This won't be the last time. Because, can I say it, Pastor? Pastor is going to be one of our keynote speakers for the first men's retreat here at True Light Christian in October. Yeah, we love you ladies. But here we come. Now, this is not a competition because we serve the same guy. So, fellas, how y'all say it? Get your tickets early because guess what? The other keynote, can I say it, Mr. Lever? The other keynote on Saturday is going to be Bishop Jones that y'all heard last June. Those of you who were in leadership, Oh, hey, thank you, Sister Lever. Oh, here, Sister Lever, how you say it? That part. Because guess what? We got two bookends on that Saturday. Bishop Jones and Pastor Mark. So here we come. Get ready. At this time, we're going to bring Sister Davenport. And I, I never knew she was like a point guard 
but I guess, I guess he is the maestro. That was my line name, maestro. My Delta line, I was maestro. Sister Day, so you know, um, for the, the weekend of the men's retreat, we want to reserve the large classroom and, 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 and Minister Day, you want to make sure that the speakers are working in the large classroom or wherever, because we're going to get the overflow. Amen, ladies. We're going to get the overflow. We're we, we going to be here. We're going we, we, we gonna to serve, because we saved to serve, too. But we're going to get the overflow. I can't wait. Can't wait. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. At this time, we would like to extend to you the privilege, the privilege of giving to our ministry. Amen? Yes. Amen. You can do that in several different ways, whether you are sitting in a sanctuary or not. You can give via Cash App. You can give via our church app. You can text to give. You can also mail us a check here to the church. And for those of you who are in the sanctuary with me, you can deposit your tithes and offerings in the receptacles on the stage and know that each and every cent is used toward the upbuilding of his kingdom. Amen? Amen. Um, we are in the season of early voting. And so from now until um, right before... May 2nd. May 2nd is the primary. So you can go to the Board of Elections and vote now if you would like. We, are, we will never tell you who to vote for. We don't care when you go vote. We just want you to go vote. Amen? Amen. Because lots of people have died so that we would have the right to vote. Amen? We want to make sure that we are going to the polls with the proper identification. You no longer can take a utility bill or something like that. You have to have a driver's license or a state ID. If you don't drive, you can have a state ID. And now, if you are in need of a state ID, you can have both. But if you don't have either one and you need a state ID, you can get one for free. You can get it for free. And so we will get you the information. If you are in need of a state ID, you have to be at least 18 to vote. But we want you to go vote. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we are going to be uh, educating folks on the issues. That's the other thing. You got to know what you're going over there to do. Don't just walk into the polls and go down the line. I'm gonna mark. No. Because this is an election where it, there's local folks. We're in Canton, we're voting for a mayor. And it's a slew of folk vote, a uh, slew of folk running for mayor. It, it, it's like they must think that um, mayor, Bar mayor Burnaby must make it look like it's an easy job. Because it's a whole lot of folk that think they can do it. But it's important who we put in that office. They have a lot of power. There are judges that we are going to be voting for. They have a lot of power. Okay? There are council people who are going to be controlling what goes on in the city. They have a lot of power. So you need to know, first of all, which, which ward you live in. And then you need to know who's running for councilman for your ward and figure out does their values line up with your values okay because this is the person that's supposed to be speaking on your behalf in the council meetings amen amen so we want to make sure that we are educated when we go to the polls because after we can't complain after they get in office because if you didn't vote, you don't get a, you don't get a right to complain. And if you did vote, and you voted for that person, you can't say amen, that part. You can't say nothing. So make sure that, that you understand the platform that they are, they are um, running on. Amen? 
And so we'll be getting you all some, um, there are some guides that will explain what these issues are. The issues are very important because there's a lot of language in those issues and you need to understand if you vote yes, that's this is what that means. If you vote no, this is what that means. You need to understand what you're voting for, okay? So we wanna make sure that we, that we do that. Also, um, there is a concert coming up in Akron. Jonathan McReynolds is coming in concert. He's a gospel artist, um, and he's coming in concert on May 5th, and that's at 7 p.m. That's gonna be at the chapel in Akron. Tickets are $40. Um, we do have a, um, a mechanism of getting tickets for $35 if you would like a ticket. Please come and see me if you are interested in that. Amen? Amen. And I believe that concludes our announcements. Now, we are starting this afternoon at 3, 3 o'clock. That means you need to be here at 2.30. We cannot invite folks to our house if we are not home. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we want to make sure that we come and love on. These are our folks. These are our folks walking into a very serious office. Amen? Amen. And we believe that they are, that they are prepared to do what the Lord has called them to do. So we need to come to support them, to pray for them and to let them know that we are proud of them, but most importantly, that the Lord is proud of, of what they are about to take on. Amen? Amen. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Again, let's govern ourselves accordingly as it relates to our announcements. And uh, I'm surprised you did not mention Tamala Mann again this week, that she will be here in Canton Labor Day weekend at the Black College Football Classic on Saturday. So again, uh, that's something that's coming, and uh, I'm just surprised that she did not mention that. You all. Oh, oh, she was okay. All right, got it. And then again, those of you who joined us online. Um, you're always welcome. The door is open to join us here in the sanctuary. But again, we thank you for joining us online. And uh, we'll see you uh, Wednesday at Bible study. And then uh, next Sunday, uh, we'll be seeing you uh, as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Now, see, they gave a quick one today, Kevin. I wonder, because pastor in the house, I just wonder. You know, Sister Stewart, they, they change up sometimes, you know, when Brick.